Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to continue our amendment series. I actually had a request from somebody to kind of explain the difference between azomite and green sand. Now don't mind my generic label. I didn't have any of my boxes here in stock to show, but so you do know we're talking about green sand and azomite. Now they're close to the same thing, but they're kind of different too, if that makes any sense. So your azomite is actually from an ancient volcano that when it erupted, it actually ran down into his seabed and evaporated over the years. Uh, from what I found, it, the, most of it that's it's mined in Utah that can be up to 30 million years old. Now, azomite is the tra it's the trademark name for it, so they say azomite, which is A to Z for all of your trace minerals and trace nutrients. Now, there is a list of everything that is an azomite. I'm going to have to look off my list just to give you kind of an idea. Like I said, there's over 70 of these, uh, but these things can contain anywhere from boron, calcium, chlorine, cobalt, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, silicon, sodium, sulfur, and zinc. That's just the big ones just to kind of throw it out there that that's what is there. Now, keep in mind, using azomite, it is a great product for your trace minerals, but it does take up to six months for all of them to break down. Now, keep in mind, some nutrients will break down faster than others. Now, one day we'll get into, and I'll break down every single nutrient that's available, what they do, and all this stuff, but azomite, it's going to fix any trace mineral problems. Typically, in my outdoor garden, like, because I have raised beds, I've got a couple six by 12s, Azomite is the one thing that I add every single year, no matter what. The reason is, is as your plants are growing, I grow lots of tomatoes, lots of peppers. Well, those heavy feeding plants, they're going to eat up all those trace minerals that are there and they're available to your plants. So that's one thing that I always like to add. And it's usually about a pound per 10 square feet. So it does take a lot of azomite to get into that large of a bed. Now on an indoor garden, you know, I might would use a quarter of a cup, maybe a half a cup into like a five gallon container. But in all honesty, with, if you're feeding your plants and you have good soils on an indoor garden, azomite isn't as important as some of the other nutrients that you're already going to feed your plants. Um, also, you can make a compost tea out of azomite. So let's say, like I, I do a lot of kelps and a lot of alfalfa meals in my teas. You can also, if you're noticing a trace deficiency, usually it'd be like a magnesium or like a molybdenum or boron. But I, like I said, I don't see that often, but you could brew in a tea, a quick 24 hour tea, and that's gonna help fix those problems. Now, on the other hand, we've got green sand. Now, green sand is actually mined from the ocean floor from a sedimentary rock named glauconite. So glauconite, it's high in iron, it's high in potassium, and it's high in magnesium. Now, it also contains some potash, silica, iron oxide, magnesia, lime, and phosphoric acid. So it's got a lot of different stuff in it, but it's going to take anywhere from 12 to 14 months for this green sand to break down to get all of those trace minerals available to your plants. So green sand, from what I find, it's better as a soil loosener. Let's say you're growing outdoors, you have a lot of clay, especially here in North Carolina, we have a lot of red clay everywhere you want to go dig to, to do your garden that green sand is gonna help loosen up that hard clay. That way you can get in there and you can actually plant stuff, you can add more compost, more things like that to your soils. Um, now, it's a small amount, like say indoors, it's no more than like an eighth of a cup to a quarter of a cup per gallon of soil. But again, I, I don't see a lot of benefits of green sand in an indoor garden. This is more of an outdoor situation where, I mean, you gotta think of this thing's gonna take 14 to 18 months. You're looking at a year and a half before this stuff has finally broken down. In an indoor garden, most, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's my tomatoes, peppers, my cannabis plants, they are typically done within 14 to 16 weeks not 14 to 18 months. So in all honesty, on an indoor garden, you're not gonna see a big benefit of green sand just because it takes so long to break down. Now, if we are gonna use this outdoors, uh, it's going to use a lot, it's like 30 pounds per thousand square feet. So it does take quite a bit of this green sand to loosen that soils. But again, if you're going for those trace minerals, I would definitely choose azomite over a green sand just because it will be available faster. Oh. 
Now again, if I was choosing one or the other, I would definitely pick the azomite over the green sand in that style of application if you're looking for trace minerals, just because of the fact that it will break down faster, it will be more readily available to your plants. Green sand is more going to loosen up your soil more in an outdoor environment than anything else. Well, I hope this was somewhat interesting and kind of so you got an idea of which one to use in your application, whether it's indoor or an outdoor, to get all of your trace minerals. All right, guys, y'all have a good one.